swarm. Vengeance shall be mine. So for Heart of the Swarm, what we're trying to do with the campaign is really try to give you the sense of being the Zerg. This is a chance for us to do, which is what StarCraft is really all about, all new races, you know, and try to make sure that the game is a very different experience no matter which race you sit down to play. And we do this through a lot of tools in multiplayer, through things like, you know, creep on the Zerg and power on the Protoss and fundamentally different units and different strategies for different units at different points in the game. But for the campaign, what we're trying to do is give you the sense that you're evolving the Zerg Swarm and that you're building up a hero in the form of Kerrigan on the battlefield. As the god queen of the Zerg, she has reasonable ways to come back to life if she has killed. She's reasonable to imagine that at some point, given enough time to collect enough power, that she could take down and destroy a battle cruiser or battle cruisers all by herself. And so this is a really for a chance for us to put a very powerful hero on the battlefield and give you that sense of ultimate authority and give you the sense that I have this mighty hero who can take down you know, squads of Marines all by herself. At the same time, we're trying to give you the sense of what it is to be Zerg, um, not just through story, but also through game mechanics. So we have the opportunity to let you evolve the swarm, mutate the swarm, um, and we're doing things a little differently. And, you know, in the campaign for Rainer's Raiders, you were primarily concerned about cash. You were a mercenary, drinking as much money as possible to acquire and buy as much technology as you possibly could off of the black market. But in the case of Kerrigan, there's no money involved, right? She's out there trying to collect DNA from various Zerg creatures to ultimately enhance her swarm and make it the most powerful, evolved army the galaxy has ever seen. For the new battle net for, for Heart of the Swarm, we've done a ton of work, and our, our UI and online team has been working like crazy since our 1.5 patch, where we did a significant upgrade to the arcade experience. Now we're updating the entire UI across the entire game. So we've got new layouts, new flows, that I think are a lot cleaner, a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to get where you want to get at any given moment. We've also got a lot of different features. We've got clans and groups, which are some new social features. You know, groups more for social players who want to get, get together with like-minded players. Clans a little bit more focused, or we're going to, going to be focus them certainly in the future on competitive play and we're sort of setting them up now so you can form your clan now and then we'll work out the competition how that's going to work going forward we've also got um, a new experience point system in the game that gives you rewards just for playing starcraft doesn't matter if you win or lose what well, matters you want to win winning's better than losing but you get something even if you lose a game you know we've got um, a whole bunch of uh, new ways to show you chat channels so we're trying to push um, some of these chat channels sort of forward so you can see them more easily so it's not as hidden in the UI. We've got a lot of new eSports features. We've got the ability for players to, or for shoutcasters to customize their own experience for their um, people who are watching the game so they can make their own observer UI. So hopefully we'll see just a wide range of really great ways to watch StarCraft created by our casters. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of features that have gone in into this experience. Um, and, and I certainly can't wait to get all of them in front of our players. And many of these features, you know, the vast bulk of them, um, are available to all players, whether you own Heart of the Swarm or not. And that will come out a couple of weeks before we launch Heart of the Swarm. We will have our big 2.0 patch, which will sort of upgrade everyone in the game now to this new user experience. So you get to see all of these features even before Heart of the Swarm comes out. I think at this point, the amount of work we've done, I think it really does feel like a strong sequel. I think if we were, you know, if we were on console, we might just call it StarCraft 3, but that's not what we're doing. We're making this as an expansion. I feel like we've had a very complete view of the Terran storyline, a very complete view of the Terran experience through Raynor, and I think we're doing the same thing for Kerrigan. We're giving you a very clear view of what it means to be a Zerg, what it means to be the commander of the Zerg, what it means to be Sarah Kerrigan, and we're offering a ton of new you know, upgrades and features for the multiplayer experience and for um, the Battle.net online experience. I, I think the team has done an amazing amount of work in putting together this product. So some of the changes from Wings of Liberty at Heart of the Swarm based on feedback we had, I mean, I could, we could sit here and talk about this all day, but um, some of the big things would be like, um, we had a lot of feedback about um, ladder anxiety, you know, and people afraid to play on the ladder and the exhaustion of playing on ladder. Like if you go home and you lose three games in a row, you're like, why did I even play tonight? My ladder rating dropped and I didn't get anything towards achievements. And that was sort of our, you know, um, inspiration for doing things like the unranked play, the remove me from ladder button, which allows you to, if you don't like your ladder placement, you can go, oh, I don't want anybody to know that I was only silver. I'm taking out of that, right? You can, you can leave the ladder. And then of course, the, the ability of the experience point system giving you something, even if you lose, right? Is, is a huge um, benefit. Um, I think in terms of the multiplayer, what's been really interesting about watching how the game has developed in our relationship with the communities, you know, we put out Wings of Liberty with you know, maps like Lost Temple and Steps of War. 
and the community made larger and larger maps over time, and we started incorporating those maps. Um, but as over time, the maps got evolved larger and larger and larger. And one of the things this fundamentally helped us with was a lot of the early worker rushes that were possible in StarCraft II. I think primarily because our controls are better, our pathfinding is better. I mean, not that there weren't worker rushes in Brood War, there were. But, but they were easier and more prevalent in StarCraft II than I think anybody, us or the community, was comfortable with. And so one of the things the map sizes has helped us with is making these worker rushes more and more difficult or even impossible. You know, they're very, very, very all in, or even impossible to execute you know, at these map sizes. And um, this has been very positive for the game in the sense the maps have gotten much bigger, but the game wasn't really balanced for those maps. You know, the, the, a lot of the stuff we're seeing with Broodlord and Fester and the high amount of Zerg greed is fundamental because the game was built, at, at the end of the day, it was tuned and tested, certainly by us and by the community for a smaller map experience. So because of this sort of evolution with the community, they made the maps bigger, we accepted those changes on the ladder, they made the maps bigger, we accepted those changes on the ladder. We've gotten to a place now where Heart of the Swarm is a very powerful tool for us to sort of reset and re-figure out that balance on these larger maps. So the marketplace is a huge challenge for us in trying to work out all of the different payment models that might be involved in it, all of the different legalities across all of the uh, different countries all over the world. Not everybody has the same rules about how things can and can't be sold. Um, and just making sure that we do it right. There's piracy concerns in the sense that people could pirate someone else's map and now we're responsible for judging whose map that was first and did he take that guy's map? And there's just a huge number of challenges in setting up the system and we're, we're just not there yet. We've absolutely been working on it, but yeah, it's, it's a big problem for us. It's a lot of work still ahead in order to get that system to a place where we want it to be and we feel like it matches some level of Blizzard quality to put it out in front of our fans. There's absolutely no chance the marketplace is going to make it for Heart of the Swarm. You know, everything you're seeing here today is what we have for Heart of the Swarm. Um, and it's something we'll keep working on going forward. So it might come with Void. It might come between now and Void. Um, if it's really, really hard, I don't know, it might come after Void, right? It's, it's definitely something um, we'll have to work on going forward. But yeah, we're not in a, in a position where we're launching this two months from now. This is going to be a, a longer haul for Marketplace. Well, staying excited and inspired about StarCraft is very, very easy to do with the community that we've got. This is a community out there that's creating constant content, whether it's arcade content or esports content. They're constantly adding energy to us as developers and constantly getting us excited about this product again. You know, you go see amazing, you know, mods out there. You're like, wow, that looks so cool. You know, a World of StarCraft, or it's amazing, right? Or you go out and you'll see, um, you know, just an amazing esport event like a GSL or an MLG. It's very easy at that that moment to get swept back up into the experience and get very excited about working on this game. Uh, the game is Heart of the Swarm and it's out March 12th.